In this video, we will use the definition of expected return, variance, and covariance to cover the concepts of capital market line, market portfolio, and security market line. The matrix here shows three possible economic scenarios, boom, stable, and recession. The probability that economic outcome will be boom is 1 over 4, or 25%, and in that scenario, the return on market portfolio will be 20%, and the return on a security A will be 25%. The probability that economic outcome will be stable is 1 over 2, or 50%, and in that event, the return on market portfolio will be 10%, and return on security A will be 15%. And finally, the probability that recession will occur is 1 over 4, or 25%, and in that event, the return on market portfolio will be negative 10%, and the return on security A will be negative 15%. We are told that the risk-free rate of return is constant at 5%. We have to calculate the following. Capital market line using the market portfolio, expected return and variance of a portfolio equally invested in market portfolio and risk-free security, and finally, we have to calculate the expected return on security A using state probabilities and compare with that calculated using security market line. Let's start by estimating the equation for capital market line, and for that, we need to know the expected return and variance of the market portfolio. So the expected return on market portfolio equals the return on market portfolio if boom were to occur times the probability of boom plus the return on market portfolio if economic outcome is stable times the probability of stable economic outcome plus the return on the portfolio if recession were to occur times the probability of recession. Plugging in the values, we get the following. The return on market portfolio if boom were to occur, times the probability of boom, plus the return on market portfolio in the event of stable economic outcome, times the probability of that outcome, plus the return on market portfolio in times of recession, times the probability of recession. And this equals 0 0.075 or 7.5%. Now let's calculate the variance of the market portfolio. The variance of the market portfolio equals the return on market portfolio if boom were to occur minus the expected return on market portfolio square times the probability of boom plus the return on market portfolio in the event of stable economic outcome minus the expected return on market portfolio square times the probability of stable economic outcome plus the return on market portfolio if recession were to occur minus the expected return on market portfolio square times the probability of recession. Plugging in the values, the return on market portfolio, if boom were to occur, minus the expected return on market portfolio, square times the probability of boom occurring, plus the return on market portfolio in the event of stable economic outcome, minus the expected return on market portfolio square times the probability of stable economic outcome plus the return on market portfolio in the event of recession minus the expected return on market portfolio square times the probability of recession and this equals 0 0.0118 
seven, five. So we have the variance of the market portfolio. The volatility of the market portfolio is just the square root of variance and equals the square root of 0 0.011875, which equals 0 0.109 or 10.9%. So now we have to estimate the equation for capital market line. Remember, capital market line would result from combination of market portfolio and risk-free asset. The equation for capital market line is as follows. Expected return on a portfolio P equals the risk-free rate plus the expected return on market portfolio minus the risk-free rate divided by the volatility of the market portfolio times the volatility of the portfolio itself. Plugging in the values, we get 0 0.05 plus 0 0.075 minus 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.109 times the volatility of the portfolio. This in turn equals 0 0.05 plus 0 0.23 times the volatility of the portfolio. So the Sharpe ratio is just the slope of the capital market line. And in this case, the Sharpe ratio of the market portfolio is 0 0.23. So we have used the expected return and variance of the market portfolio to estimate the equation for the capital market line. Now we have to estimate the expected return and variance of a portfolio equally invested in market portfolio and risk-free security. So the expected return of the portfolio equals the proportion of portfolio invested in market portfolio times the expected return on the market portfolio plus the proportion of portfolio invested in risk-free security times the risk-free rate of return. And this equals 0 0.0625 or 6.25%. Since risk-free rate of return is assumed to be constant, its variance as well as covariance with other risky assets will be zero. And therefore, the variance of the portfolio equally invested in market portfolio and risk-free security will be equal to the proportion of portfolio invested in market portfolio square times the variance of the market portfolio, which we just calculated. And this equals 0 0.00297 or 0.297%. So, so far, we have calculated the expected return on market portfolio, the variance of the market portfolio, as well as the volatility or standard deviation of the market portfolio. We then use these results to estimate the equation for the capital market line. And finally, we have calculated the expected return and variance of a portfolio equally invested in market portfolio and risk-free security. Now we have to calculate the expected return on security A using state probabilities and compare with that calculated using security market line. So using the state probabilities, the expected return on security A equals the return on security A during boom times the probability of boom plus the return on security A during stable economic outcome times the probability of that outcome plus the return on security A during recession times the probability of recession. And this equals the return on security A during boom times the probability of boom plus the return on security A during stable economic outcome times the probability of that outcome plus the return on security A during recession times the probability of recession. 
and this equals 0 0.1 or 10 percent. Now we have to estimate the return on security A using security market line. Security market line displays the relationship between risk and expected return on an asset and shows the expected return on a security as a function of its beta with the market portfolio. So based on security market line, expected return on security A should equal the risk-free rate of return plus the beta of A times the expected return on market portfolio minus the risk-free rate. This is the equation for the security market line. We will first estimate the covariance of return on asset A with the return on market portfolio. And this equals the return on market portfolio during boom minus the mean return on market portfolio times the return on security A during boom minus the mean return on security A, which we just calculated to be 10%, times the probability of boom plus the return on market portfolio during stable economic outcome minus the mean return on market portfolio times the return on security A during stable economic outcome minus the mean return on security A times the probability of stable economic outcome plus the return on market portfolio during recession minus the mean return on market portfolio times the return on security A during recession minus the mean return on security A times the probability of recession. And this equals 0 0.01625. The beta of security A equals the covariance of return on A with the return on market portfolio divided by the variance of the market portfolio. And this equals 0 0.01625, which is the covariance between A and market portfolio, and we just calculated it, divided by the variance of market portfolio, which we calculated earlier as 0 0.01187. And this equals 1.37. So beta of security A is 1.37. Based on this result, the expected return on security A equals the risk-free rate plus the beta of security A times the expected return on market portfolio minus the risk-free rate. And this equals 0 0.08425 or 8.425%. In other words, Security A is producing greater expected return than that justified by the beta of Security A. Therefore, Security A is underpriced.